and thank you for joining me again today for the Finding Hope After Loss podcast. So I want to start off by saying I apologize. I'm a little bit hoarse today, but I'm going to try to get through it as best I can. So just bear with me. If you are not aware, March is Pregnancy After Loss Awareness Month. This is a month that's dedicated to raising awareness for the various aspects related to going through a pregnancy after loss. I think so many underestimate just how stressful and exhausting it can be, being terrified that each appointment will bring bad news, scared we'll have another loss. Going through loss steals some of the joy of any future pregnancies. You can no longer have a carefree pregnancy. You now know that a pregnancy doesn't automatically equal a healthy baby in nine months. It's just so complicated and it's full of every possible emotion. Sometimes they hit you all at once even. So you can check out the Journey for Jasmine Instagram and Facebook page for several posts about Pregnancy After Loss Awareness Month. I also want to bring up a gift exchange that I am putting together for Lost Moms that is going to take place for Bereaved Mother's Day. This is a day to remember all the mothers who have lost children because Mother's Day can be so hard for so many of us. And I'm hoping that this exchange will help bring just a little bit of joy into your life on such a hard day. So you can check out the pinned post on Instagram or on Facebook for more details and to join. So today I am talking with Sandy. She has been through both infant loss and early loss. She lost her son Harrison when he was born at 24 weeks due to a placental abruption. He had both spina bifida and a 22Q genetic condition. Hello everyone. Today I am here with Sandy. Sandy, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, everybody. My name is Sandy Hadges. I am a lost mom. I have had both an infant loss and a miscarriage, and I have two rainbow daughters, three years old and a little over five months old now. Oh, three-year-olds. I'm a stay-at-home mom currently. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Stay-at-home mom currently, um, thanks to the pandemic, and I just kind of lost my job after the pandemic started. Everything closed down. Um, I'm an educator and I worked in the Children's Museum here in Cleveland and we kind of just shut down right when I got off maternity leave and I've stayed home with my girls ever since. Kind of, I I guess it can be a blessing in disguise. Not good to lose your job, but at least you have time with your kids. Right. So trying to look you, at it from a positive perspective. <laughs> yeah, I know sometimes it's hard, but. <laughs> so can you share a little bit about your lost journey? Sure. My husband and I got married in 2011 and um, tried for a baby for quite a while and finally got pregnant in 2018 with a baby boy. And um, everything seemed to be on the up and up. I was going to appointments regularly. Heartbeat was strong. Things were looking good. My doctor recommended not having any kind of um, uh, testing done beforehand because we were both healthy, no family history of anything going on. So we just kind of sailed along. I luckily wasn't sick or anything like that. So things seemed to be going well. I went for the um, the 20 week uh, gender ultrasound and it was extremely stressful. Um, the ultrasound technician was new and kind of fumbling around taking a really long time in general, making us a little bit nervous from the get go. Then she just kind of got super quiet and things got really awkward feeling and <laughs> We started getting worried. I started asking questions like, okay, where's the baby's this? Where's the baby's that? And she kind of just started saying, you know what? I'm going to have to have one of my coworkers come in. I can't find what I'm looking for. And um, just kind of something seemed off to my husband and I. So we were just kind of getting nervous. I was getting the sweaty palms. She had two more people come in and look for things. And they all just kind of whispered and were very quiet. 
and we knew something was going on and the the supervisor came in and told us okay we have to wait for the doctor to talk to you anymore about your pregnancy I said okay that seemed a little strange the doctor came in and and said okay well we don't know for sure without further testing but it looks like your baby has something going on with their spinal cord um, because the way that the brain was shaped when they were looking at the ultrasound, it was pulling down in the back and they thought there was possibly a hole in the spinal cord, spina bifida. So he said, we would recommend you doing an amniocentesis now while you're here for the ultrasound. And we can tell you for sure what's going on, but it looks like there's some spina bifida going on. So they recommended an amnio, um, which would tell us whether for sure spina bifida was happening and also the genetic panel to tell us if anything else was happening with our baby. They didn't tell us the gender, nothing else going on there. Um, just a really huge shock. They wouldn't let us leave without talking with the genetic counselors. So we went and talked about to the genetic counselors. And at that point I was 19 weeks along. And so they have to tell you by law, um, if you want any kind of action taken on the fetus while it's in utero, we only have in Ohio, I'm in Ohio, so we only had until 20 weeks to decide whether an abortion was something we wanted to do or not. Um, so they wanted to get the amnio done right away so that the testing could be given, we could get the results from the testing and everything um, as soon as possible so we could make that decision for our family. So we talked with the genetic counselors and they kind of explained what spina bifida was and everything. Um, we knew a little bit, but they, you know, they kind of tell you in depth what the spectrum of uh, presentation is once you have a baby on the outside with spina bifida. It could be very mild. It could be very major. It could be your kid is in a wheelchair for their whole life because they can't use their body. It could just be a little bit of incontinence when they... Um, grow up it could be anything on that spectrum so we kind of decided after that likely spina bifida so we were okay with that since we didn't know that the quality of life of our child was going to be bad uh, obviously that's not enough that wasn't enough for our particular family to decide to abort the baby so we decided okay we're just going to raise this special needs child it's not a big deal um we found out from the amniocentesis that we had spina bifida in our baby and also 22Q, which is a genetic condition where you are missing part of your 22nd chromosome. And once again, that was uh, a condition that presented on a spectrum. It could be really mild, it could be really severe. We didn't know until the baby was born. You could have really bad heart problems and um, premature death of that child, but you didn't know until you were born. So. Um, we decided, obviously, we weren't going to abort a child without knowing that the quality of life was going to be horrible. So we went along with the pregnancy. A um, couple weeks later, we were in a minor car accident. We just had a little fender bender. Didn't really think anything of it. Went to the doctor. Everything was looking good. Went along with our days. A couple days later, I woke up in a pool of blood and went to the ER I kept bleeding quite a bit for a week. I was in the ER for a week and I was getting ultrasounds regularly. Baby's heart was being monitored regularly. He sounded good. Um, I sounded good except for the bleeding. So they kept me there. They determined that I had a placental abruption, but I had already been in the hospital for a week and I had lost amnio amniotic fluids. So basically they told me and my husband that we had to decide do we want to risk my health being out of the hospital without um, amniotic fluid for my baby, or do we want to by delivering prematurely? So um, my husband and I made the decision to keep me as healthy as possible, and we delivered early. And our son Harrison was born at 24 weeks and only lived a couple hours. So... That's how we lost him. Um, we got a couple of precious hours with him on the outside. And the birth was a little tough. I was in labor for 30 hours, knowing that I was likely going to lose my son. Um, everyone in the hospital was beyond supportive and 
my husband was obviously my complete rock. So it was during the process, you don't really have a lot of time to prepare yourself for what happens after the loss. Um, I would say afterwards, it was so much harder than I expected it to be. But I'm here. I've had two beautiful daughters since then. And we talk about our son all the time. It's good. It's a, it's a positive memory, as positive as we can have it, I think. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's hard when you have been through a loss to, to I, I guess I don't really know how to describe it. The best way I can say is, you know, there's still happy moments we had with our babies, even if we, mm -hmm. they were so few. And I think it's really important to still remember those happy moments too, because not everything connected to them has to be sad. I that agree with sense. that hundred percent. Yeah. I think it's, maybe it's a coping mechanism, but maybe it's just making the best out of the situation. I try to think of the positive things and fortunately I'm the one that carried him. So I have more memories of his movement in the womb and feeling that connection you do as a mother. Um, right. And I just try to remember, remember that and, and remember how strong he was when he wasn't healthy. Did you receive much support from family and friends after your loss? Yes and no. I think it's it's such a hard thing. If 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 anything, I would say I grew so much closer to family and friends who have also had losses. Um, I think that hopefully the tide is turning on the stigma related to having pregnancy losses. I think generationally people in, in older generations right now never talked about loss. And so there were a lot of people I found out in my family and friends circle that have had loss that never talked about it. So I feel so much closer to those people because they were like, I'm so sorry this happened to you, but guess what? I also had a loss or a miscarriage in my pregnancy journey in my family journey. And um, I was so surprised to never have heard about those stories. It's still, so it was like so said, it was so yeah. helpful and refreshing. It's just crazy to me how many to know people, that other people still have gone through it. Yeah, it's it's just crazy to me still how many people don't talk about it. Like you said, you would never know, you know, that some of these people had gone through it until you went through it, and then you know yeah. they're like, "Oh, me too," you know. Yeah, and I just I feel so badly for them that I wasn't able to support them when they got, went through it because they kept it so closely guarded and. It really, really helped me to know that other people had gone through this and finding online uh, friends and support systems to help me cope. And people, oh, you guys felt the same way when you had a loss, you know, that's, that's it, it felt so much, it feels so much more reassuring to me. It's just such a hard thing, but I know a lot of, a lot of family and friends don't talk about our loss at all. Um, since had we, so I had my three-year-old daughter right after I lost Harrison three months later, I got pregnant with her super healthy, wonderful pregnancy, um, other than being sick, <laughs> but <laughs> she, she came out great. Everything's on the up and up with her. I had on her second birthday, I found out I was pregnant with a baby and that ended up being a chemical pregnancy. So I had another loss there. Then I got pregnant with my youngest daughter and everything's great with her. So, um, it's just, it's, it's such an awkward thing for people who have not gone through losses, I think, to acknowledge their friends and family members who have had losses because they don't know what to say. You know, that it's, it's hard. Like, you don't, you certainly don't, as a loss parent, you don't want to hear everything happens for a reason. Or, you know, oh, well, you wouldn't have your beautiful daughters if you wouldn't have had those losses. But right. that's sometimes all people know how to say because they're trying, you know, they're trying to say something positive out of a terrible situation. And it's just, it ends up being so awkward, but sometimes I feel like just having some acknowledgement that it happened and that you're overcoming it helps. Yeah, I agree with you there. I think most people are not trying to be, you know, intentionally hurtful. I think they're saying the things that no. they think are helpful, but they're yeah. not to us always, you know? Oh yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. The last thing you want to hear after you've lost your baby is everything happens for a reason because there really was no reason. This was a spontaneous thing. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, and even if there was a reason that doesn't bring him back, right? You know, that That's doesn't really right, make exactly. it better. <laughs> right. So are there yeah. any um, aspects of loss in general that you think need more attention? 
I think just the occurrence of how frequently people lose babies and um, how often this happens should should be a little better recognized. It, I hopefully, like I said, I hope that the tides are turning and that we are being more open as a society and as friends and family members together. I hope we're more open about loss because the support I've received after having been so vocal about my loss has been really overwhelmingly positive for my family. So I just hope people admit when they, they have these things happen so that they can accept the help and the support. I think it's hard sometimes for some people to accept the help, you know, I mean, not that people always yeah. offer it, but I think sometimes we just think it's something we have to go through alone. And you're right. Like we don't, we don't have to go right. through it alone. There's so many others out there, you know, who have been through similar things and, you know, understand exactly yeah. how we feel. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how I would have coped without such a supportive husband. And I'm so fortunate that I have that. And a lot of people might not. And I, I think that it would just be so wonderful and helpful if, you know, single parents going through this have support systems online in their communities, et cetera. Did your husband well. receive support? Did you need it after your loss? Um, no, probably, probably not really. I, I likely received a little more support. Um, I would say for the most part, our families really didn't know what to do. We got a lot of very kind food and cards and flowers and our house was like a florist. It was so comforting to know people were thinking of us. And I think a lot of people were just at a loss at how to help. And we were too, we were still in shock. Yeah. I think, you know, so I think since then, since then, as we, as we have gone on with our family journey and had other pregnancies, he's gotten support through those. And that has really helped heal him as well. Yeah. I just know. So, so many times the dads get, you know, kind of forgotten about. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So do you have oh, any yeah. Yeah, advice? It's such a shock because. Um, oh, just sorry, reach what out you when saying? you can <laughs> find it's, oh, I just, I was just going to say, I think for him, since I, you know, I was the one carrying the baby, it just, the second, second he was able to know Harrison he was gone. So, you know, that, that really can take a toll. And I know that I was surprised at how deeply he was hurt and hurting after our loss. And when people say like, you know, oh, you can try again, or, you know, like, oh, people, people that have had miscarriages try to relate and say, oh, well, I lost my baby and it's just not the same. And, you know, he held his son while he passed away, you know, it's, it's, it's a really different, it's a really different thing. All loss is significant and it affects you in different ways. But I think that a lot of friends and family were at a loss as to how to relate. Well, I think you bring up a good... men who have to be strong. Right. I was going to say, I think you bring up, you know, a good point that, you know, he actually held him as he passed away. And I think that's so different than a pregnancy loss. Not that pregnancy loss isn't also hard but it's just it's just such a different kind of loss you know yeah you have a different relationship so do you have any advice for anybody who is newly going through a loss find find some kind of support and even if it's not even if it's not family if it's not close friends maybe an online support maybe online therapy there's a lot of good um online therapy options now and using your you know what our um our hospital system was exceptional at getting getting us some community support sites and um i'm not sure about how um helpful i guess how helpful they can be after a loss but ours was phenomenal we have a lot of good support um, groups around Cleveland for lost parents did you go to any of them after your loss or I like did attend not. any online yeah I, I did not right after our loss because I was still kind of in shock and we were trying to um, process everything and then right after was 
um, when I got pregnant with my daughter and I was sick almost right away. So <laughs> I, I wasn't, I wasn't very um, active as far as going to in-person groups, but I started going to some online groups and um, getting involved in some Facebook loss groups. And we have a group called Cornerstone of Hope here in Cleveland. And uh, they do a lot of online support and in-person workshops and therapy sessions. Uh, and I had, I've been to a couple of those a little further out from my loss than right away. But I, it, I think for me, it took me a little while just to get up the nerve to be a little more public about our loss. Um, so I didn't really feel super comfortable while everything was fresh to right. go to group therapy sessions or anything. I didn't really want to be a weeping mess because I didn't feel like that would give me much benefit. <laughs> right. No, I understand. As as, yeah. Yeah. So did you find going through pregnancy after loss hard? Oh yes. Oh yeah. It was it, every, every like weird moment you just, Oh my gosh, what's going on? Oh my gosh. Like, Oh, I, I, um, I drank orange juice the other day and I didn't feel her kick. Is that, I, like, you know, like sending messages to my doctor, is that okay? You know, she, she hasn't kicked for an hour and a half. Is that okay? <laughs> I completely understand yeah, you that. Know, you're just a total nervous wreck. And, and I had, um, had my daughter right before all the COVID close downs and everything. So we were kind of, we were very, very isolated in those early months of her life. And then um, I had, had the loss and then I had my second daughter, but we're still kind of, you know, we're still kind of in a post COVID world weirdness going on. So there's, there's that edge to the coin. And then there's also the loss parent edge to the coin. And it's just, it's a lot of anxiety. I didn't know I possessed. <laughs> No, I'm I'm right there with you. I completely understand that. <laughs> COVID definitely yeah. made our world different. Yeah. Do you it's have another wrinkle? Do you have other ways that you include your son, like in in your family things that you do? Yes, he was born a couple weeks prior to my daughter's birthday. Actually, my my daughter's original um due date was a day after his birthday, which was kind of crazy. Um, but she was born in November as well as, as him. So we do have a little bit of a, we have muffins or cupcakes or whatever. And she's, she just turned three. So we haven't really discussed her older brother with her yet. Um, we've got a couple little mementos on our Christmas tree right now. We've got a little baby stocking and a little angel in his name. And those are probably conversations we'll have with both of our daughters soon for the older one, maybe a little bit later for the younger one, but we'll definitely keep him within our family traditions and memories, including him. I have a three-year-old daughter too, and we've just kind of started to, like I mentioned Jasmine, but mm -hmm. yeah, she's still, like you said, a little young to understand fully like what happened. Yeah. What I don't want to happen is for her to say, okay, where is he? And not understand you know, and make that harder for, harder for my husband and I to hear right. her saying, well, where's my brother? Where's my brother? I want her to actually understand he was here and now he's not. And that's just going to be, yeah, I think it's just going to be a little bit longer. She understands a lot, but maybe just a little bit longer for that, but we're not going to avoid it. Right. So and why do you keep him in the mix? Yeah, definitely. So why do you think it's important to share your story? Oh, I just, th I just think that it's, it's just too much of a stigma around loss right now still. And I think as a person, my philosophy is the more I know, the better I can make decisions about how I feel, how I act, any of that. So I feel like the more you know about loss, the better prepared you are to deal with it. If you have to go through it, I hope, you know, for anyone I know, I hope obviously anyone listening I hope you don't ever experience loss but if you do maybe having a little more information in your toolkit will help you cope with it better so I just feel like it's it, it you don't need to know every single issue you could possibly have ever 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 because that's just going to make you a mess but know that there's hope on the other side and you're going to come out of it and 
you don't have to forget about your losses. You can remember them in any way that works for you and your family, but you can make it out of the cloud. I think that's really great, you know, to share, because I think we get stuck in our grief sometimes and think that, Mm -hmm. and I'm I'm not saying we ever like get over it, but we can get through it and learn to live with it. Yeah. I know that I had people early on tell me, oh, don't worry. In a couple of months, you'll forget all about it. And I think like, that's just, uh... that's a coping, that's a coping, <laughs> must, that may be a coping mechanism for some people, but I don't want to forget all about it. I want to learn from it and remember him. I don't think that he was ign- insignificant. I don't think that our chemical loss was insignificant. I think that we can learn from it and keep those babies in our memory and in our family in spirit and package all that up and keep moving on. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. Is there um, anything else that you'd like to add or share? I don't think so. I want to thank you personally though, for the community that you've built with the journey for Jasmine page and activities. And I've had such a comforting experience and I'm grateful to the women that I've connected with via you. So thank you. Oh, well, thank you. That means a lot to me. I, I just, work hard at trying I just to build started, that. <laughs> <laughs> it can tell. Absolutely. I just started getting some of my um Christmas card exchange cards and I'm just blown away at how kind and generous people have been in reaching out. And I've already made some new friends and I'm grateful for that. It's nice to connect with people on that level. I love that. I mean, like lost mom relationships are just the best. They're the best people. Yeah. And you know, I, I just love, I wish we could all meet under different circumstances, but I am exactly. glad that my paths yeah, have I crossed understand. with all of them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I agree with that a hundred percent. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much for uh, coming on and sharing about your son and, and your story. Thankful. Thank you. I'm, I'm thankful that I was able to and grateful to you. Thank you so much, Sandy, for sharing your story with us. I love that you brought up how important it is to have a support system after a loss. I know this isn't always easy for everyone. Some of us have people that reach out and offer support, while other of us have people that aren't at all supportive and even say hurtful things. Your support system can be anyone, a family member, a friend, your spouse or partner, a counselor, a doctor, anyone else who's there to help you. I actually found the online loss community to be an amazing source of support. They are people who have been through what you have. They won't judge you for how you feel. They understand how you feel. If you're looking for support and don't have anyone in your life, I highly suggest making some connections in the loss community. I'm always really happy to help you connect if you're needing needing help finding someone. There's also many support groups specifically for lost parents that you can join, both in person or online, and these can be extremely helpful as well. Just remember, you don't have to go through loss alone. Please accept the help when people offer it. Please ask for help if you need it. And please look for someone who will be there for you and be your support so you have someone that you can turn to on the really hard days of grief. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, we are all in this together.